Hello and welcome to another edition of Attack of the Sequels. Today I'm going to be looking at Medieval for the PlayStation. Yes, the first one. This game's over 10 years old, so a lot of people might not know it or remember it or whatever. Everyone's free to watch this, but do know I'm going to get into spoilers, and I'm not going to be warning about them, so... You play as Daniel Fortescue, who, I don't know if you could tell from that, he's a skeleton. He's got no jaw, and he's missing one eye. I don't remember the exact year, but 1290-something or 1390-something. He leads the armies against the evil sorcerer Zarek. With and after this battle, history gets it confused and writes him into the history books as a great hero who personally slayed Zarek. That didn't actually happen, though. What did happen, as you find out in the opening cinematic, is that he died on the very first charge, getting an arrow straight into his eye which explains why he's only got one eye for the entire game. Fortunately though, the battle was won, Zarek was defeated, and the game picks up exactly 100 years later when Zarek returns. Now the problem is, most of the heroes are dead, so when he attacks, there's really no one to defend the land of Galomir, which I think is supposed to be somewhere around England. Now what Zarek does is among other things. He raises the dead. And the thing is, Daniel got, I'm thinking because he wasn't really a hero, so he didn't get a fancy funeral. He just got the small mausoleum in the local cemetery, you know, in the graveyard where all the not famous people. So Zarek is walking past, raising all the dead, and unfortunately for him, he also raises Daniel, and since he doesn't go to wherever all the actual heroes are buried, he doesn't raise any of them. Bottom line, Daniel Fortescue is indeed the last hope for Galomir. I'm a really big fan of the game. I think it's, it's a lot of fun, it's original. It doesn't really feel like it's using a story we've heard before or, you know, something from somewhere else. I think it's a really cool idea that he you know, he gets a second chance to prove the history books right, because they already have him down as a hero. So, you know, he gets a chance to make that fact, so he won't always have to be ridiculed by the real heroes, because, you know, in the beginning, when you meet the heroes, half of them are saying, what, you? Seriously, you are the hope for Galomir? Oh, that is not good. Now, the game is your basic hack and slash. You run around and chop up zombies and various monsters and you start out with just, since he's a skeleton, your arm. He can literally pop one of his arms out of its sockets and he can either bash you with it or throw it and in the best boomerang fashion it'll return and he'll, you know, and he'll catch it. But very early on you find a sword and then Later on you get, I think, two more swords that are better. You also get a crossbow that somehow fires ridiculously fast. It's like a machine gun or something. Um, bow and arrow with a couple of different, um, I think you've got like regular arrows, fire arrows that actually do set the enemies on fire and they'll be running around on, and that can hurt you too if you get too close to one that's on fire, and magic arrows which are really strong, I think. You can also carry shields, and you get three th strengths. And basically, if you can tell that you're going to get attacked, if you can't dodge it or something, you basically just press triangle, and he'll put up the shield, and that'll take the damage. And it can keep doing so until it breaks. Now, you usually just find these shields, and when you find one, it'll repair the old one up to the full strength. Now the third one you have to pay to have repaired, but you can always do that provided you find one of the merchant gargoyles, which is also where you buy extra ammo. But yeah, and it, it takes you to really interesting locations. You go to this 
pumpkin gorge where you fight, you know, the king pumpkin, which is this humongous pumpkin, and uh, he's got all these little minions that are like man-sized plants. I mean, their bodies are like the roots or something, and their head is, of course, a pumpkin. There's one level that takes place in this really creepy field of grain, and like the opening cinematic to that has got um, a scarecrow turning around towards the camera, and it's like um, where its eyes and its mouth are supposed to be. There's like this bright light that shimmers out and just laughs towards the camera in a really creepy fashion. And you fight um, scarecrows in the level, and you just keep hitting at them. They bleed uh, straw, of course. And they eventually just, you know, dissipate once you've hit them enough times. And if you walk into the the field of grain itself, the, the where it's not been cut down, you know, it says I don't remember if it's in the manual or some. No, I think it's in the game. It says that there's like evil forces in the in the grain. Whatever. If you walk in there, you know you'll die almost instantly. At one point you're launched into the air and you wind up on a pirate ship like a, a you know the, the Flying Dutchman kind of thing and every pilot pirate on there is a scale and like every single word they say is or, or it's, it's so much fun. It's got a great sense of humor. Um, Daniel Fortescue being a skeleton you might be wondering you know is his brain intact, and if you find a low enough um, ceiling that you can jump up into, it'll make a nice hollow sound confirming that, yeah, it's gone, you know. He's just, he's a walking skeleton with one eye, and that's it. The, the jaw being missing also makes him, his speech nearly indecipherable. You know, you get subtitles, so you can figure it out, but, you know, s some of the other characters, like, make fun of you and say, I, I'm, you know, some some of them are like, I'm sorry, I can't quite tell what you're saying, and I think it's Zarek himself. He says, "What's that? Grumble, grumble." It's just so much fun, and and also you come across these gargoyle heads on that are mounted on walls, and they're you know magical, so they talk to you, and they'll be like mocking you and saying, "Oh, you think you can do it this time?" and also providing some hints and information about the area you're going into sometimes. Some of the weapons have more than one attack and some of them you can like charge up to do a specifically powerful attack and of course if you're hit before it's done charging up you'll lose the attack so you have to run around a little bit and avoid them and then you can unleash for example uh, the swords you can do a sweep that goes all the way around and if you just tap the I think it's the square button if you just tap it, he'll just do a straight, but if you um, charge it up, it'll be more powerful, and, and in that way you can take out several enemies almost immediately with just this one blow. I also really like how the game handles life, because in most classic games, you'll have, you know, extra lives, you know, and if you die, you start over from the beginning of the level with a new life, you know, and people just accept that because it's a video game, whatever, you know. Here, you have a life bar, of course, uh, which is green because you run on magic, and green is the color of Zarek's raise you from the dead magic, and that's also how you get more. You stand in these spots where you can see more of this green um, neon colored magic coming up from the ground. It's like, you know, he's used so much magic there, some got left over, some didn't, you know, whatever, and you can stand that and... Now, the way it handles extra lives is you can pick up these life bottles and they'll, when you find them, they'll be full already. And if you lose a life, you'll simply drink from the first of those life bottles. And you can store, um, I don't remember exactly how many, but like at least half a dozen if you find them, that is. And I just really think this, this makes such good sense, you know. He's dead, yes, but he was before, he's been dead the whole time, he's been dead for a hundred years, so he just uses this magic in the life bottle, or energy bottle I think is that might be called, 